So it's great pleasure to uh, have uh, Dongwook Kim, uh, Kim from Kies. Uh, he's known to us as five D BBS creepers and the KK towers. Yeah, thanks for introducing me. It's great pleasure for me to give a uh, one hour talk here. Although I couldn't be in Shanghai really, but it's it's very good opportunity to share my our idea about these subjects. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about 5D BPS quivers and KK towers. Uh, this talk is basically about the so-called BPS quivers, but to make sure that we are on the same page, let me just briefly review uh, sorry, the recent development about BPS quiver and basics first. So uh, the first, I'm going to talk about what BPS quiver is. And this, uh, this group of business stems from actually four dimension, not just in five dimension. Uh, there, 4D BPS quiver means effective supersymmetric quantum mechanics for BPS objects in D4-4 and equal two, like Cyber-Witten theories. So in Cyber-Witten theories, where its Coulomb branch shows very rich and dynamic spectrum, uh, we can analyze that spectrum using so-called BPS quiver or supersymmetric quiver quantum mechanics. Uh, there, we can draw BPS quiver uh, based on these two rules. So first, a node of quiver means each elementary objects in a theory. So this plays a role of basis. I will mention the, the meaning of basis a bit later. And the second, arrows, we can uh, uh, draw arrows between nodes following the rule here. So number of arrows is given by the Schrodinger products between basis objects. So for instance, here, the fir left first node means monopole in 4D SE2 cyber witten theory. So we can uh, assign this charge one zero here in this basis. And we can assign the second node, uh, the charge minus one comma two, representing a dion in cyber witten theory. Then the shipping of products between these two is two, and the number of arrows drawn here is two. So we can use this kind of quiver quantum mechanics to analyze whether a given charged state is stable or not on a particular point of moduli space. For instance, when uh, we fix the charge of, uh, charge of BPS objects of interest uh, and expand it in terms of basis is gamma one or gamma two here, then we can assign the rank of quiver quantum mechanics, uh, uh, rank of gauge group in the quiver quantum mechanics. For instance, when this uh, given object is expanded, uh, the charge of given object is expanded this n gamma n1 gamma 1 plus n2 gamma 2, then we can assign rank un1 to first node and un2 gauge group un2 to second node. And then we can compute the written index of this supersymmetric gauge quantum mechanics and see whether this state is stable or not by looking at the non by looking at the value of written index. And so this is quite a nice tool to capture the wall causing behavior on the moduli space of uh, cyber witten type theories. So, uh, and the wall crossing in 4D theory is captured by the jump of written index of this effective quantum mechanics under the variation of Fi constants of this theory. Uh, for instance, uh, in case of 4D SE2 pure uh, gauge theory, we know that uh, this Asymptotic region of modular space, the theory is weakly coupled and W boson is a stable particle. But uh, near the center of this, uh, this region, we know that W boson decays into monopoles and dions. So here, uh, this behavior is captured by the written index of this two node effective quiver. And as we vary a five parameters of this quiver, on one side we have a uh, spin half spectrum, whereas on the other side we don't have uh, anything. So this uh, jump of between index captures the wall closing behavior happening in 4D. So, so our basic, uh, I mean, the beginning of this program was to generalize this to five dimension, uh, where long branch uh, five dimension. So first I will explain how to draw the BPS keyword first based on so-called brain tiling. And second, I will introduce the recent development about the written index computation of 5 db plus quivers. So is there any question so far? Yeah, then I will explain how to construct 5 db plus quiver. So 
Uh, before proceeding, let me just briefly introduce what kind of 5D theory we are interested in. So uh, the class of uh, 5D, 5D dimensional theories, gauge theories, I will explain today, uh, can be made of so-called geometric, uh, geometric engineering. So this means we consider M theory complexified over toric Calabria three folds and consider a transverse five dimension as the uh, as the space space time where we can think of gauge theory. So it is known that the BPS spectrum of uh, this theory is made of uh, has geometric origin. So that two and four cycles in this Calabria threefold resulted in stable or unstable BPS particles or strings, anyway, BPS objects in this five dimension. To be specific, M5 brain on wrapping these four cycles in Calabria three result in monopole strings in five dimension, whereas M2 brains wrapping on two cycles in Calabria three result in electric or instanton particles in five dimension. So what we do want to draw, I mean, by BPS, by the BPS quiver, we mean some effective quantum mechanics, which can describe the dynamics between these objects. But you may see that actually uh, describing the dynamics of these objects in terms of 1D quantum mechanics is a bit insufficient because we have multiple strings as a, a BPS objects in 5D. Whereas in 4D, we just have multiple particle, effectively multiple particle or electric particles. So quantum mechanics was enough to consider their uh, dynamics. But in 5D, one dimension is quite insufficient. So uh, to over to bypass that, we need to assume one thing. So for later, I, I mean, throughout this talk, I will consider five dimensional gauge theory, which is, uh, which is circle compactified. So you can wrap up situation where every this multiple strings or dionic strings, which has which what volume is two dimension, wrapping this circle compactifier circle. So the effectively in 4D KK theory, which is made made of the compactification of 5D theory, every BPS objects are point like. So there, uh, BPS keyword again involves node which is made of elementary objects and arrows, which is defined by the shooting of products, which number is defined by shooting of products between charges. But in addition to the 4D BPS quiver, we need two more nodes because of this uh, compactification and because of the fact we are considering 5D. So in 5D, instanton becomes a particle. So it gives one more additional basis node. And because we are considering uh, 4D KK theory, which involves one circle, uh, one compactified circle direction. So we th that KK mode gives one another node. So yeah. So when you consider SA two theory, so in addition to monopole and electric or dionic nodes, we need two more nodes representing instanton and KK mode, respectively. So this is the example of. BPS quiver for SA2 gauge theory on a circle. And, and to draw a more diverse kinds of BPS quiver of various theories, we need to go back to this circle compactified set. So the circle compactification I introduced to bypass the monopole extended nature of monopoles. Uh, actually, this uh, this construction reminds us about 2-8 reduction of M theory. So there, BPS objects are given by D4 and D2 and D0 brain, uh, which re represent monopoles and electric particles and instantons and KK modes, respectively. So let's focus on D0 brain uh, representing KK modes for a moment. Then, uh, consider states attributed to D0 brains, so without any D2 or D4. Then these states should have this kind of charge expansion, so it only has KK mode charge without any monopole or instanton or electric charges. So let's consider BPS quiver representing these states only. Then uh, actually we can take T duality of this configuration. So here we have D0 brain and 4D KK theory 
there are four decay theory we are considering and in transverse direction there are is called a three fold and we take we can take t derivative three three times so that uh we end up with d3 brain proving this polycolibial three folds actually but uh this is very familiar setup uh, which is known as brain tiling so there is combinatorial tool to engineer four identical one quiver gauge theories supported by this d3 brain for probing to equilibrium three folds so thanks to this uh old uh this combinatorial tool we can easily draw a uh, 4D quiver gauge theory, uh, 4D dimensional quiver uh, based on combinatorial or geometric tools given toric diagram of toric curve S3. So 5D VPS quiver is basically the dimensional reduction of this. So the quiver, the shape of quiver is determined completely by brain tiling and not just shape, but the super potential also inherits the 4D dimensional brain tiling quiver. Uh, to be precise, the Higgs branch of four dimensional n equal one quiver coming from brain tiling uh, corresponds to the probability of collaborative three folds. For instance, to engineer five dimensional SEQ theory, we needed uh, local F0 as transverse for collaborative three. Then its geometry is probed by D3 brain, and we take T derivative three times to make D3 brain to D0 brain. Then we end up with this kind of quiver in one dimension, and its full potential can be easily read from brain tiling analysis. Anyway, the important thing is uh, one this effective one dimensional quiver has a uh, fine tuned spot potential, which inherits from four dimensional construction. This will be quite important throughout the talk today. And one more thing is. Uh, in 4D case, I mean, brain tiling case, the Higgs modular space is given by the Clavier 3, but now we are considering one dimensional effective quiver. So there, uh, the modular, full modular space is not just Higgs modular space, which is same to the Clavier 3 we are proving, but there are, uh, there is R3 direction coming from Coulomb modular of one dimension. So this is nothing but uh, one dimensional vector. Uh, nothing but the Coulomb moduli, which emerges from dimensional reduction from 4D to 1D. Anyway, the moduli space becomes uh, has another component here, R3. A more detailed algorithm to construct the BKS quiver of uh, complicated theory is sketched through this closet and the Zotus paper. And one last short remark I want to make here is uh, thanks to, uh, because we can associate 5D VPS quiver to 4D quiver gauge theory based on brain tiling, we can borrow many tools in tiling business to draw VPS quiver. For instance, one tool is partial res resolution. So we can associate uh, VPS quiver of gauge theory coming from more complicated singularities to one from simpler similarities. For instance, 5D SE, when we know, assume that we know 5D SE2 gauge theories with one flavors, uh, VPS quiver, and it's given by here, then uh, we can we can take, we can get 5D pure SE2 gauge theories VPS quiver by fixing it. For instance, we can, if we one can fix one, theory, one gauge node here, then we can, end up with this four-sided quiver. So this way we can draw many different uh, theories with this quiver more quickly. And yeah, then now let me get into the next topic of today's talk. So first I'm gonna explain the witness computation of Abelian BPS quiver, which means uh, all the gauge nodes in the quiver, yellow gauge nodes, has U1 gauge group. Uh, and later, I will talk about more general class of BPS quiver and its utility computation. So, as you're already familiar with, uh, the definition of Witten index is nothing but the partition function with fermionic uh, parity inserted. Uh, but 
Uh, actually, the definition of witness assumes its low temperature behavior. So we need to compute beta to infinity limit and in principle. Uh, but in practice, we sometimes take beta to zero limit and assume there is no significant difference between, the, uh, thanks to supersymmetry, there is no significant change when we interpolate this beta to zero to beta to infinity. Then take this take this answer omega here and argue this is written in this. And localization computation also, in some sense, assumes this kind of thing. So it is quite known that n equal four super mechanics uh, written in this are captured by JK raised formula based on localization computation. Uh, but this is not always the case. Uh, actually, this JK raised based localization localization formula assumes the generic spot potential, for instance. But in case of our class of Kuiper theories, there, as I showed, there are fine-tuned spot potential to generate the non-compact Calabria 3 as its fixed branch. So this violates one assumption, which was necessary to construct localization formula. And also in case of there is a continuation from continuous spectra, this uh, interpolation between beta to zero limit to beta to infinity limit is not obvious. So to be, uh, to be precise, let's go back to the precise definition of beta index, then it should count the L2 normalizable states. So we uh, does not uh, take, uh, take trace uh, of every state, but we need to take trace over L2 normalizable normalizable states only. Uh, uh, and as I mentioned, this fine-tuning fine spot potential, this 1D gauge theory entails, uh, complicates the, our computation problem a bit more. So one may hope that because of this complicated potential structure and due to the symmetry of Calabria 3 we are probing, uh, one may hope that uh, we can turn on global symmetry progressivity so that we can make a theory effectively get. Then there is no contamination from continuum sector. And yeah, so we can expect our localization computation, for instance, will give reliable results. However, there are many counter examples which reveal the computation is not easy. The straightforward, the one particular easy example is this C cube divided by C3 example. Actually, this is the kind of BPS quiver for E0 SCFT in five dimension. So when you compute the written index of this quiver, then let's assign, for instance, we are interested in uh, KK spectrum only, uh, just one single KK tower. Then one can assign one 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 to n one and to n three and compute the abelian uh, within uh, I mean the within index of abelian this yes quiver. Then actually the naive JK answer result uh, answer resulted in index zero for this quiver. But as I showed, the L two cohomology analysis more careful analysis resulted in non zero answer to this quiver. So for the specific detail of this figure, I mentioned this later. So let me recap the puzzle. So basically the puzzle is what we are going to count. Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. So I'm not familiar with this uh, Witten in index calculation. You said that you, uh, at two different limits, this uh, index had, is not the same. Right. Uh, is, is that, uh, is, is that a wall crossing uh, uh, phenomenon? Uh, no, actually, wall crossing means the jump of index on jump of index i, this i, not oh. omega. And this i is true with an index, which captures the number of L2 normalizable states. And wall crossing means the jump and jump in the, I mean, the number of L2 normalizable states changes under the variation of some parameter of theories. Okay, I see. So this beta uh, is, is, um, is not uh, related with this FI term, right? 
Uh, me. Uh, actually, to make to make the parameters dimensionless, we may need to find com combination of beta and fi parameter, the uv fi parameter. But in uv sense, beta is nothing to do with fi parameter. It does not appear in the definition of theory on first step. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I have so, one uh, question. Uh, yeah. What is the difference between Kali F and the Kapta F? Sorry, I, I, you may already explain, but what's the Fugasti Kapta? This next slide? I, yeah, this I, one. Yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry. This, this curly F means fermionic uh, parity. So mm -hmm. it's a number of fermionic particles. Yeah. And this F is flavor symmetry. Oh, oh flavor symmetry. Okay, okay. Yeah, Thanks. or global symmetry. I mean. Okay. Yeah. So let me go into abelian Kiba theory. Mm, so th this abelian Kiba represents uh, this uh, KK, single KK charged states due to the construction. So what we are computing is given single KK mode is stable or not in, in compactified theory or plus one dimension. So uh, to to begin this discussion, let, let me go uh, this, this slide. So basically, within index counts L2 normalized states, as I emphasized. So uh, to before naively computing and or naively believing the JK rescue answer, we need to construct a wave function of states and see whether it satisfies L2 normalized states or not. But for easy theories, we know that L2 normalizable states comes from cohomology. In, in particular, for the class of theories which have geometric origin. So uh, this kind of uh, BPS fever theory, we know that wave function of L2 normalizable states uh, correspond to entries of L2 cohomology on the target spaces. So to be precise, we can construct the wave function in a disvectorized form. So one is scattering states, which propagates along the R3 spatial direction of 40KK theory, uh, where 40KK theory lives. And these L2 normalizable states on Calabria 3 will give the second vector in the wave function. So the second green part comes from the L2 cohomology of Calabria 3, whereas this R3 side in the uh, in the full modular space of Kuber quantum mechanics, will giving give the scattering states along R three direction. So the this computation business narrows down to this cohomology computation to be precise L two cohomology computation with this target M, Calabria three, of interest. And fortunately, there is its well known machinery and mathematical theorem which counts L2 cohomology of directly level three of interest. So let me briefly introduce the algorithm. So the, there are seven different uh, different sets of co uh, different uh, entries of L2 cohomology ranging from H0 to H6 in Calabria 3 case. So first, uh, there is pairing between an elements of L2 cohomology. So to be precise, to be specific, we have pairing between K cohomology and 2D minus K cohomology, where this D means complex dimension of the For instance, H2 and H4 is mapped and H1 is H and H5 are mapped. So if we can compute the upper half of this L2 cohomology, that's enough. We can compute the full cohomology based on this upper half, including H3. And second, there is a mathematical theorem for manifolds with conical metric. And fortunately, our manifold of interests are all conical. So based on this theorem, if we can compute just the Durand cohomology of upper half, H4, H5, H6, then it's nothing but the L2 cohomology of interest. So why we need to compute is H3, L2, and H4, H5, H6 from just Durand cohomology. And last, 
the drug, there is natural pairing between singular homology and drug homology. So from H4 to H6, there is a natural pairing with homology H4 and to H6. And last, there is algebraic property and non-compactness of Calabria 3, which we can use to eliminate H6 and H3 and H5. So this algebraic property of toric manifold uh, kills this H3 and H5, and non-compactness does not allow uh, L2 cohomology H6. So what survives in the end is nothing but H4, fourth homology. So we, we need to count compact, uh, sorry, uh, four, four cycles to compute the L2 cohomology. And ba based on the first pairing I mentioned, this is same to H2, L2, and that's it. So this procedure says the uh, written index of theory is nothing but two times dimension of H4, both homology. And we can refine this based on grading by Y plus D, so-called Y. This is nothing but SU to R symmetry, which uh, one dimensional supersymmetry uh, quiver enjoys. Anyway, this, uh, this Y plus D grades the elements of cohomology by this P minus D. For instance, this element involves Y minus three, uh, Y to the minus three, and this element H6 will involve Y to the plus three. Anyway, after introducing this grading, we can refine this two times dimension of H4 into these cases. So in the end, this written index is nothing but symmetric or palindromic around polynomial in the fluidity variable. So this property is it's quite uh, quite essential in the end. Anyway, and this uh, observation can be generalized to more diverse class of toric clavier 3, which engineer 5D SUP gauge theory with Chan Simon's letter Q. There we have uh, non-symmetric, I mean, here H2 and H4, homology, second homology and fourth homology is not equivalent. And like in case of, uh, this is nothing but so-called YPQ manifold, and this is so-called XPQ manifold, which engineers uh, SUP gauge theory with Chan Simon's level, and SUP gauge at the same gauge group, but with one flavor in 5D. Anyway, they are cohomology, uh, sorry, they are homology elements or naive drawn cohomology elements are not palindromic or not symmetric. So H0 and H6 six are different and H2 and H4 are different. But because uh, what contributes in the written index finally is nothing but H4, so here P minus one is important and P or P plus one is not important. So our final written index is nothing but P minus one, which is a dimension of H4 times this refinement of uh, refinement involving SU2 symmetries. So our result, we can wrap up the results so far. Then this, uh, uh, what Abelian quiver counts is nothing but the number of four cycles in the in the associated toric level three, and this is nothing but the rank of five D SCFTs we were considering in the beginning. And one might ask, then what is this interpretation? Then, then as I mentioned in the beginning, this is the index of one 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 quiver, and this represents nothing but this neutral KK modes. And this is just the uh, then in gauge theory, which commutes uh, with all the Cartan generator is nothing but Cartan itself. So this is nothing but Cartan parts of vector multiplets. So it's natural that there are rank many Cartan parts of uh, given gauge theory. And this 101, what 101 keeper counts is exactly that part. So this is our this interpretation of uh, this anti cohomology computation. And let me uh, continue this analysis to more general rank quiver. So first generalization might be n n n n n quiver, where every node shares the same rank u n, and this represents the nth kk power of given 
compacted by four dimensional theory. So I guess and then and then is the next target of our computation. But unfortunately, the L2 cohorts computation I mentioned cannot be generalized to this and then and then higher rank tower. Uh, the reason is simple. Uh, if we generalize U1 gauge group to UN, then the target of that uh, that theory is symmetric products of abelian theory we were considering. So we call that abelian theory's moduli space is given by Clavio 3, uh, this part times R3, which comes from the Coulomb moduli of vector multiply. Then, then because of this new R3 vector, when we take symmetric product, then symmetric product and symmetric products involves some uh, n minus one R three vectors. Actually, it involves n R three vectors, but just one part. This R three over, I mean, diagonal R three will make propagating degrees freedom along the spatial three dimensional three dimension. So this is in, in I mean, this is irrelevant. What irrelevant? What is irrelevant? Uh, what is relevant is this green part. But this green part does not uh, have L2, doesn't does not have L2 cohomology because of this R3. So if a state which is relevant in computation has geometric origin, L2 condition should be imposed on all moduli directions except this special R3. But there is no normalizable L2 cohomology on these manifolds because there are too many diverging directions. I mean, infinite directions. So here one might ask then every index of NK quick tower vanishes, but the answer is not. So let's go back a, a little and think about the easy example, so-called N equals 16, quantum, maximally supersymmetric uh, young man quantum mechanics. So let's take M3 to be C3, the Calabial to be C3, then the pro theory will be given by this. And the uh, moduli space uh, accepts this propagating, I mean, spatial R3 direction will become this part. Uh, so here we can end up with, uh, by massaging this, we can end up with C3 times R9 times N minus one divided by SN, the symmetric product. And geometric computation, as I mentioned, resulted in vanishing index. So the index of uh, sigma model, which emerges in the infrared, Will vanish. But uh, according to uh, earlier computations uh, by these guys, uh, SUN gauge theory, I mean, maximum spot metric Yang Mill SUN gauge theory uh, has non zero index. And, uh, its index is one, not zero. So gauge theory index is different from geometric uh, construction, geometric constructed index. So although this nonlinear single model in this vanishes, the gauge theory has kind of resolved answer. So it has non-zero index here. So we need to focus on these kind of states to capture the gauge theory or cable quantum mechanics indices. And actually, so actually this lesson is quite universal because when we consider general Calabria three folds and its symmetric product, then moduli space will become like this. Here, I3 is nothing but Coulomb moduli and it's symmetric product version because of because we uh, raised the rank of gauge group from U1 to UN. Then as I mentioned, this overall I3 will result in this propagating degree of freedom along the special three dimension in 4D KK theory. Then remaining, look at this remaining part. And because of, of the action of symmetric product SN, is diagonalized, uh, can be diagonalized so that we can factorize this equation into two pieces. So here we have R3 times M3, and here we have actually M times M minus one, uh, M to the M minus one times R3 to the M minus one. But uh, because, because our Calabial is, uh, let, let's assume that our Calabial is B, and we, we can see this, complicated in Calabria locally. Then one might think this uh, local surface looks like R flat R6. 
then we can see this uh, moduli space of uh, this part of moduli space is equivalent to the moduli space of uh, n equals 16 maximal sparse metric quantum mechanics, uh, young new quantum mechanics. So if the states, uh, I mean, we can, uh, if we can uh, approximate this full moduli space into this factorized form, one is R3 times M3, which is same to moduli space of abelian cubers. And the second part is same to the moduli space of maximally supersymmetric young new quantum mechanics cuber. Then the wave function will be factorized into this form. One, came, comes, one part comes from this R3 times M3 or abelian factor. And the second part comes from maximally supersymmetric uh, young mill factor. And, and just five, five or 10 minutes ago, I, met, I explained how to construct the states based on L2 cohomology of torical level three M3 here. And I just mentioned it is well known that this uh, states, I, I mean, this modular space supports one states in, in gauge theory limit. So we can say, we can say the BPS states, I mean, wave function of BPS states is constructed by the, by the product between abelian, uh, abelian wave function here or geometric part here times SUN gauge theory part here. So based on this construction, we can argue that uh, NNNN quiver enjoys this with non-zero written index and the index is same to 101 quiver and note that this uh, following this construction the answer is fi independent uh, excellent i should have emphasized that abelian answer is one more i index of 101 quiver is fi independent because this modular space m3 is always there regardless of value of fi counter Anyway, because of that nature, uh, we can argue that this non-abelian quiver with the same rank n also have the index i, which is same to the abelian quiver rank times uh, two over this Fogarty refinement. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Can you please go to the previous slide? Yeah, uh, Boris Pulin speaking. So yeah. uh, what is the justification for neglecting the influence of the singularity when looking at the dynamics of the, the relative dynamics of this N uh, D0 brains? So you, you approximate your toric calabia by, by flat space, right? Right, right. That seems to be key not in reaching this result. Right, right. Uh, actually, there are several uh, justification, but one thing I remember is, uh, let, let's assume that this D0 brains we are and D0 brains we are considering uh, um, gather, gathering together. So their uh, their relative distance, if uh, their relative distance is quite close, then actually uh, let me see. Yeah, I, I think first the center of mass coordinates of this N D zero brains are at quite aside from singularity. This mm -hmm. is one assumption, and then there we need to consider these zero brains gathering around. Yeah, of course, there's no problem if the center of motion is far from the singularity, but yeah. uh, you might expect some modification when they all sit close to the singularity, right? Uh, I think one. Well, but if, if they are close to singularity, I guess, um, yeah, he, I think here, because we are considering particles, uh, um, we can consider, unlike, unlike string case, there is no, Twisted sector like things on near the singularity, then one can, one can hope that this, this will continue to the singularity. 
Yeah, well, I agree with the with the upshot of the analysis. I'm just not convinced by the argument. So I agree that at the end of the day, the the index must be independent of the number of these zero brains. Yeah, because they have to. If you if you want to be able to see them as Kaluza-Klein excitations of a single state in, in eleven dimensions, but, uh, I find that the argument is quite heuristic. All right. Actually, open-fold quiver theory, we can exactly co construct this kind of sectors by assigning some condition on the uh, theories. But non fold theory, I mean, when the historical level S3 is the fold of C3, then we can exactly find this sector in the, in the uh, Lagrangian. But I think non fold theory uh yeah there is just a heuristic argument I mean, those are bounced at, at, at thresholds right it's very delicate to argue whether or not there exists a single uh, bound state uh right Oh, thanks anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so far I mentioned so the uh, quivers representing KK towers. One is abelian and another is non abelian. Now let me continue. So now one can ask what can we say about other parts of BPS spectrum? So the answer must be very complicated. So the full chamber structure of this 5D BPS quiver is quite complicated. So for a modest, modest step of investigation, let's look at the sectors without magnetic or instanton charges. So I mean sectors only with electric or flavor charges. So here, uh, the states of interest are now uh, have this kind of charge expansion. So you have NKK towers plus, for instance, uh, one W boson. So this expansion means we are considering KK towers of W boson. So this means we are considering Kiber with rank N plus one and N plus one to give two nodes in case of SU2 gauge theory and N, N nodes are gauge rank N to the other nodes and something like that. This does not, of course, this does not cover the full spectrum, yeah, but this is just a uh, quite important part in the full spectrum. And in this analysis, we will result in MPS chromic formula, which is the acronym of Marshall, Pilin, and Sam. And their formula is uh, is capturing the written indices of anchor force for quantum mechanics by tracking its wall crossing pattern. So to naively capture their, uh, to briefly capture their analysis, uh, they are looking at how much uh, in this changes when we jumped the wall of marginal stability. So here the uh, varying parameter uh, will be this FI parameter, and and while we vary this FI parameter, the number of stable particles or written indexes will changes like green region to red region to yellow region. Uh, but so what? What uh, their formula captures is this part, red, green, or yellow part. And one another input, uh, we need to compute the full index is so-called quiver invariant, which is robust on the wall crossing. So by adding these two contributions, we can end up with this written index. So, and their formula is basically a recursive relation between quivers and its sub quivers an uh, index of quiver and index of its sub quivers. And with uh, quiver invariant, I invariant, uh, given all to these sub quivers, we can determine the index of given quiver at particular chamber based on the formula. So uh, let me briefly compare this MPS formula and JK formula or localization comp computation. So, the latter one or JK formula assumes generic spot potential, uh, whereas our 5D BPS quiver inherits fine tuned spot potential of the probe theory. So, this fine tuned spot potential 
hampers, I mean, hinders us to compute the return index based on JK residue. And also in case of this, this, uh, this is the explicit example of uh, example where this JK formula does not agree with other computations, L2 or MPS or anything. So, where, so Colombi counting bypasses this fine tuning by setting this quiver invariant I invariant, I imagine. And that captures the structure of the theory. So let me add more comments about this uh, local P2 example. So here, the potential of this theory is given by this in case of 5 dbps quiver. But JK uh, and the result of JK index, uh, JK risk mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. is given by this. Mm -hmm. and this, this index is zero. Okay. Whereas the L2 cohomology counting resulted in this non zero result here. And MPS formula, MPS formula or MPS code uh, suggests that this answer I took index to be this minus y minus one over y plus i invariant. This is input, nothing but something we need to fix explicitly. So if we fix i invariant this way, we can uh, end up with vanishing with index. Whereas we can, whereas if we fix i invariant vanishing, uh, we can end up with this non-zero between that. And we can interpret this one green I invariant as one from generic potential, and this red one as one from a uh, quiver uh, invariant from fine-tuned spot potential. So depending the form of spot potential, I invariant changes, and if it, it will make difference between these things. So our suggestion about this I invariant is following. For a single node sub quiver, let's assign this index one for the I invariant. And multi node sub quiver, let's assign vanishing with index. Then what, what one can check our accounting, uh, I mean, the, the uh, then one can check our accounting for specific examples. So one, one particular sec, I mean, one particular point, oh, not the point, the region in the moduli space, one can check our counting is so-called recoupling chamber. So there are many different chambers in the moduli space, but recoupling chamber is uh, the corner where our intuition can be applied easily. So there we can, we can uh, expect that W boson and flavor particles spectra is stable. So uh, index of W boson and its KK descendants should be given this way, minus Y minus one over Y. This is nothing but uh, contribution from vector multiplets. And index of flavor particles uh, should be given by this way, one. This is nothing but hypermultiplet contribution. And, and in re recoupling chamber, KK tower should not play any significant role I think about reproducing one behavior with different energies. Energies, so we can assume we can expect this KK power indices agree with this original particles index. So let me explain this the charge the charge rule, rules a bit later. Then we can numerically check based on Professor Piolin and Major Sen's code. And we can see our ex expectation holds throughout uh, simple theories with I invariant, I mean, our assumption about I invariant holds for this class of spectrum. Yeah, I have one question. Yeah. Can, can you go back to one slide, uh, please? Is no, the, the one with the number. So this W and Q, what what are they in terms of uh, the zero? Uh, of um, sorry, the uh, in terms of D brains. I think what kind uh, of? this W is W boson. So this is D two, some particular D two. Right. And this M is the rank assignment to the PPS people I do. No, I I see. So the formulas uh, that you have written. Uh, in the in the yeah those ones so those are valid for any quiver uh with super potential or you what are the 
the conditions you specifically have because you assume this some something for this part that you call i invariant i mean this i invariant yeah that that condition is uh, an answer for any quiver yeah i i think so far yeah this assumption holds I see. So, so you are indexed to, to not reproduce this uh, Opakumar Waffe invariant. Uh, I think to reproduce that Opakumar Waffe invariant, we need to look at different sector. I mean, different apply parameter region. Oh, different, different region. Yeah. In, in, in which, in the modular space? Right, right. So here we assign a five parameter particular value given by this zeta weak, for instance, this F0 four-sided figure. We can assign this one minus one, one minus one a five parameter. But this this eyes, uh, this eyes are supposed to be invariant on the no, the, the eye you so compute is there, that is invariant. not invariant. Okay. Right. Okay. I see. So different in different region they 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 may give you the Kopakumar Waffe invariant or? Yeah, we, we can expect so. Actually computing Kopakumar Waffe invariant involves a bit more labor uh, in with this MPS code and with this PPS figure. Because usually instanton, combination of instanton and KK modes have many high, higher rank. This one, I mean, this rank becomes higher to compute the higher Kopakuma Waffe invariant. So we- yeah, But what one D2 should have non-vanishing Kopakuma uh, Right. That's okay. So that one, yeah. one, one, like the most simple D2. Uh, right, right. That's one thing one can check. And yeah, we will check ours, we produce that invariant on, on other chamber. Oh, it's and they say a word. Yeah, I think that the it's an open problem to understand the, the relation between Gopakuma Waffe invariants and quiver invariants. There, there has to be a particular chamber in which the two are equal, but I, I don't think it's uh, very well understood, except for oh. some simple qui symmetric quivers such as the conifold and so on, when there is no chamber dependence. All right. But such quivers with collapse devices, I think it's, it's not yet. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Okay, thank you. Yeah, also, by the way, uh, yeah, I think uh, if you look at the Kubokova invariants, so they have two spins. So, but here we only have like one Y, so I don't know how you can compare uh, a GV invariants with this uh, computation. So that they will be like the, at a specific genus. Uh, so you mean the, the unrefined GV invariants? For example, genus zero. Um, but I mean, it's not clear to me how you mesh uh, the parameters. I mean, for example, you, you can use topology vertex to compute body motion for F0, and then you can extract all the GV invariants. But uh, yeah, so okay. GV invariants are, are labeled by genus and by uh, class, right, uh, right. class exactly. on H2. Yeah. Right. So the D2 labels a class on H2, and probably these are mostly genus zero. Yeah, but uh, actually, uh, yeah, actually, I think this uh, is also very puzzling to me because in topological strings you don't specify any stability condition. You just write down the topological vertex. For example, you can extract the GV invariants. Yeah. So, but that, that's right. that computation is done close to a maximally unipotent monodromy point on the Kalman module. Eh? Okay. So then we need so to. It's it's kind yeah. of on a it's chamber, but. Oh, you mean that should uh, map to some chamber in the so large condition. volume? Yeah. I see. I see. Okay. I see. Okay. Well, we can discuss after. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the questions and comments. Yeah. For the remaining time, let me briefly uh, explain what chamber we were looking at. So um, they, if if you want to uh, have more time, you can you can have more more time. I'm uh, we are flexible about time. Oh, I see. Yeah, I mean um, it, it's up to you. Is there any further questions? Okay, then let me continue. 
So the weak coupling chamber uh, is achieved about by these uh, uh, following sentiment charge choices drawn here, so that W boson is stable particle. So in in this S two uh, the in this S two EPS quiver pure S two theory, then there we know this part. Uh, I didn't explain this before, but take this for granted. So this first node means monopole, and this second node is nothing but W boson and anti-monopole, and this third node is instanton minus monopole minus W boson, and this fourth node is monopole minus instanton plus KK charge. So if we sum over this uh, quiver with one, 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 one rank assignment, everything cancels, nothing but K, only KK charge remains. That's why I explained one 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 quiver is uh, representing this uh, this KK charge, and so so the weak coupling chamber is achieved by uh, this choice. We need to assign large central charge to the monopole and large central charge to the diodes, but small central charge to the W boson, so that mass of W boson is small, much smaller compared to this mass of um, monopole and diodes. So this W boson becomes uh, kind of stable particles. But uh, as you see, this uh, central charge is nothing but uh, kind of, this Z plane is like vector space. So the W boson central charge is the sum of our uh, sum of monopole central charge and diode central charge. So if we are uh, one one assigns uh, monopole central charge. Uh, here, locating at this right side of central charge plane, and if one assigns simultaneously diode central charge located at this left side of central charge plane, then we can naturally achieve this constraint. So, with large uh, central charge for monopoles and diodes, and smaller central charge, much smaller central charge for flavors or W bosons. So, this uh, this choice. This assignment of a pi constants is uh, this embodies this construction. So this is why we can uh, we can see this W boson and W KK tower or KK descendants of the W boson shares the same resonances. If we look at this parameter, I mean, if we tune these parameters differently, then this answer, I mean, index for W boson and index for W plus KK. Is, Make difference. They show difference, but only in this weak coupling chamber or around this region, we can see this agreement. Yeah. So let, let me wrap up the talk today. So so far, I mentioned how, how first how to compute. I mean, how to draw BPS quiver briefly, and mentioned it always entails finding swap potential, which makes JK formula fail. So to bypass this difficulty. Um, we need to first use, use homology counting. So we counted L2 cohomology of toric Clavier 3 of interest based on point guard duality and known isomorphism between L2 cohomology and homology. Then we ended up with Fi independent with an index of Abelian BPS quiver, which represents the KK tower. And this is nothing but the uh, Cartan sector of DPS as Cartan sector of vector mass effects. And for we can extend this to non-abelian quivers, but unfortunately, cohomology counting fails because ground state is inherently gauge theoretical, not geometric. So geometrically, there is no L2 cohomology element relevant to our computation, but gauge theory resolution provides one states or rank many states in the counting. And Coulomb branch, uh, Coulomb branch counting can be used in the computational BPS quiver indices with hypothesis about quiver invariant I invariant. So most of the I invariant is vanishing except one node single noded quiver, small gammas. So with assumption on small gammas I invariant one uh, is equal to one, then we can recover the spectrum I mentioned the KK mode or W boson or its KK towers and flavor, flavor methods. So we can explicitly check this with MPS code. And 
in recoupling chamber, our assumption holds. We show our assumption holds. Yeah, this is the end of my talk, and this is the business have to, which have just begun. So I hope many of you can join this journey. Yeah, thank you for listening. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, any question from audience? Maybe I can make one comment. So, so, so the fact that uh, that this uh, quiver invariant vanishes except for uh, single node quivers, that's actually supported by also the analysis of the waffa witten invariants uh, on on these uh, local surfaces which uh, are encoded by the same quiver, right? Uh, so that analysis is actually not sensitive to the D0 brain indices, mm -hmm. uh, but at least for the, for those, uh, for the other states, uh, uh, then it, it's entirely consistent with the vanishing of, the C, of this uh, quiver in bars. I see. And I had a, a second uh, comment, which is that, uh, so you mentioned the fact that the, uh, the non-genericity of the superpotential makes this JK formula fail. Right. On the other hand, it, it allows for some alternative uh, counting of BPS indices using representation theory. So even though you cannot compute the uh, the L two cohomology of the of the of the space, you can actually count representations of the quiver, and and again uh, verify this uh, this uh, this assumption or this uh, conjecture that these uh, quiver invariants are, are zero mm -hmm. and you can also compute in this way the, the d0 brain indices except what you count is not the l2 index but the so-called motivic index and i think it's still a bit uh, unclear what's the relation between the two but it's consistent with your your findings mm, i see The motivic index you mentioned is uh, one involved in DT invariant side, right? So it's the motivic DT invariance, which which count the uh, uh, the cohomology with compact support, and so I guess from it you can read off the L two cohomology, although I'm not exactly sure about the details. Thanks for the comment. Uh, may, may I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, so maybe it's related to uh, one of the uh, previous comments by Boris, but uh, so 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 you, you were you, here. You were focusing mostly on Tori Calabi Yaws, and for those theories, uh, you got to this conclusion about the index being rank times minus y minus one over y. Right. Uh, for the KK say. Uh, um, so could you maybe you mentioned two assumptions uh, for, for, for this to be the case about the Calabia, um like algebraicness and something else. Um, so, 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 but maybe this is still the case for uh, those Calabiaos which are not of their type, uh, but maybe uh, your evidence is for uh, the, those Calabiaos for now? Yeah, actually, Right, because our BPS quiver construction relies on brain tiling and it only considers Tori Calabia 3. Yeah, but if you want to lose some assumption we imposed, then we couldn't rely on the tools based on brain tiling. Mm -hmm. but, but as you mentioned, there are many different Calabiaos or different geometry which can engineer different 5D gauge theory. Mm -hmm. So that that's that's interesting region we can pursue, right? But I think the the observation we made is only valid in this historical view region. Okay. Thank yeah, you. but but basic counting method will hold there. But but I'm not sure whether the metric conical metric structure and algebraicness and non compactness everything can be applied there. I think one one of these three cannot be applied. For instance, the algebraic property or something like that. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Thanks. More questions? Um, may, may I ask one? 
Uh, well, I, I'm just curious that, uh, uh, well, if we can modify the JK prescri prescription a little bit to, you know, reproduce your results. Mm, that, that, that's an interesting question. I didn't think of much. Uh, but in, in this, in the logic of JK computation, Basically, a uh, spot potential term is Q exact term. So that's why they do not contribute it the formula. Mm -hmm. So I think there we need to know how to, well, yeah, that, 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 that's one hurdle. And the second hurdle is that because we were considering uh, theory with non-compact target, there is contamination from asymptotic regions of targets. So infinitely yes. many continuous spectra exist, can exist without any effectively gapping the spectra. So uh, yeah, one live tool is, uh, as I mentioned, we can turn on some relevant fugacity, uh, which, uh, which reflects the symmetry of superpotential. For instance, many uh, because of we are considering toric collapse, toric manifold, there are many U1 symmetries, and there are many holonomy, uh, many velocities we can turn on based on that flavor symmetries. Yeah, but unfortunately, that dark method didn't work. Okay. Yeah, so that the alternative needed to overcome these two hurdles. Yeah, one from Q exact potential and one from continuous spectra. Yes, okay, I see. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, can you tell me something about how to relate to this, the buffer within? Uh, actually, because actually uh, yeah. this, this, the relation between this index and buffer within partition function uh -huh. uh, is revealed by Professor Piolin, one of yeah. the audience here. Yeah. <laughs> I That's think you can comment a bit about this. And the reason I draw this uh, blue triangle here is that I don't know much about this sector. OK. <laughs> yeah, I think one observation he made is uh, uh, by looking at particular chamber choice, we can, this written index captures uh, terms in buffer within partition function. So in other terms in bad for it then. Yeah, so not full part partition function, you know. I, I think this buffer within I, I think he claimed this buffer within partition function is a generating function of between indices. Oh okay. So each term gives one indexes of quiver. So uh -huh. if we consider higher ranked quiver, then we can recover more terms in buffer within partition functions. I see. Okay. The non-trivial thing is chamber choice and how the manifold of Papa Witten partition function is related to our construction mm -hmm. because they are considering 4D gauge theory. So, yeah. Well, it's a 4D gauge theory on the on the divisor, but it's still counting states in the 5D gauge theory in the transverse space, right? right. There's really an equality between uh, those BPS indices. I mean, BPS indices and Papa Witten invariance for when once you spell out the, the map between the uh, the charges and the stability conditions. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker. Thank you. So I will stop recording. Uh,